When we're talking about graphs, we need to consider whether they're one-to-one, -one, many to one, one to many, or many to many. Okay? The main reason for doing this is we need to be able to identify whether a graph actually represents a function or not. And when we are looking at functions, we may want to find an inverse function, in which case we need to make sure that the graph is one-to-one. -one. Okay? All of this and why that is will come about soon. So, let's first of all understand what each of these terms means. Now, in all of these cases, this first bit is the x and the second bit is the y. So what that means is that 1x, one value of y. Okay? So for if I substitute in one value of x, I get one value of y. So an example of this would be something like uh, a straight line graph or you could have um, y equals ln x, for example, or you could have y equals e to the x, for example. Okay, these are all examples of one-to-one -one graphs. The reason being is that for each value of x, there is only one value of y. Okay? And that is what I'm talking about. There are not is not a case of there being two value of two values of x that would give you one value of y. Okay? What each value of x has one corresponding value of y and one only. Okay? Right, so many to one. What does that mean? Well, that means that there are many values of x that will give me one value of y. So there can be two or more values of x that could give me the same value of y. So what that would mean could be a curve like uh, y equals x squared, for example. Okay, where I could have two values of x... that both give me the same value of y. Okay, so this is a curve that would be many to one. So this is a curve where you need to consider it being like the straight line horizontal test, okay? Horizontal straight line test, where no matter where I am on this one-to-one -one graph, if I drew a horizontal line, it will only ever cross the curve once. Here, if I draw a horizontal line, if it crosses the curve at any point more than once, then it is many to one. Okay? Now, one to many would mean that one x value could be giving you multiple y values. So that's slightly more tricky to visualize. But if you just think about a parabola on its side, so the graph x equals y squared, for example, then here is a graph where one value of x can give you multiple values of y. Okay? So that is uh, an example of a one-to-many graph. And you could do a similar vertical line test where if you hit the graph more than once using a vertical line, then you know that it is one to many. Now, a graph could be both many to one and one to many, and hence we would refer to it as many to many. There are many values of x's, many values of x that could give me many values of y. So, what I mean by that could be a graph that is a circle for example. So I would have, uh, let's say I choose this point here. So one value of x here is going to give me many values of y. However, I could, using many values, well, one value of x here will get me two possible values of y, but I could get those values of y 
using multiple values of x. Okay, so it faces the horizontal line test and the vertical line test, okay, where it cuts the graph in more than one place in both cases. So this would be many to many, so circles, ellipses, um, you know, if you manage to do a, a spiral, for example, that would be many to many. So really, the key idea coming from this is, well, which of these are functions? Now remember, from our definition of what a function was, one input, one output, okay? Now that would infer, ah, right, so the one-to-ones, they're the only functions, okay? That's what you might infer from that, but that's not the case, because clearly f of x could be equal to x squared, that is still a function. x squared is a function. So this is a function. Okay. Now what I'm meaning by one input, one output, is focusing on the one output aspect. I put something in, I get one thing out. Regardless of the fact that I could put in multiple values of x, so 2 and minus 2, and still get the same y value, the point is that I'm only getting one y value. Okay, so this is a function. So a function can be many to one, and a function can be one to one. Because I can put a value of x in, and I get out one value of y. I put in a value of x, I get out one value of y. But in both of these two cases, I put in one value of x, and I can get out two values of y. And one value of x here can get me two values of y as well. So neither of these would be examples of functions, but these would. Now, a key identifier with that is that let's say that that was x squared plus y squared equals, I don't know, 4. Okay. In both of these cases, the idea would be, well, if I could write it as y equals... okay what would be my function? So if I then square rooted both sides, I'd be saying that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x. So if I was to write this in function notation, this would be my situation. But this isn't a true function, because if I'm putting in one value of x, I'm going to get two values of y out. Okay, Two values out, because so I've got the plus and minus. Okay, in exactly the same way over here, if I rearrange this, y squared equals 4 minus x squared. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, so I could write that in function notation like that. But the problem is that this isn't a real function because of that plus minus being involved. So that is why we try to avoid these plus minuses when we're writing in function notation. So this is how you look at functions um, and what these one-to-one, many-to-one, one-to-many and many-to-many -many actually mean.